Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. There were some updates this last week. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. David Eldersveld's got a blog post talking about do we need slicers anymore? This blog really goes through and looks at the differences between the filter pane and slicers and really talks about the fact that for basic slicer functionality, filter pane's probably enough. And if you wanna get into more complex scenarios such as having a slicer or filter type operation on specific pages and not necessarily all pages within your report, then maybe slicers are the way to go. So if you haven't checked out the new filter pane, be sure to check out this blog post to see, maybe can I update my report, get rid of some of those slicers, move them over to the filter pane and call it good. Chris Webb's got a blog post looking at privacy levels inside of Power Query and M Syntax. And this is really timely because I was actually working with a customer where we're dealing with this exact issue, looking at Cosmos DB and some Cognos Analytics items. And Chris does a good job going through the scenarios of where privacy levels are gonna come into play, how the actual web service, you can't adjust those privacy levels. You can adjust those privacy levels from the service perspective if you can force it through the gateway, but not all data sources can go through the gateway. He also looks at an interesting case of using data flows to actually accomplish this task as well, because from a data flows perspective, you can actually tell it to ignore those privacy levels and actually do the combine anyway. So that's pretty cool, but it's also dependent on what data sources are available from the data flow side of it. A lot of stuff to unpack in this blog post. I definitely recommend you check it out and see if this would help you in a given scenario that you may be facing trying to merge two different data sources together. We got the Power BI Developer Community December update. That's a lot of words. In this update, there were a couple things focused on Power BI embedded and just regular developer items, so the APIs and whatnot. There was an article focusing on best practices for loading your reports, so definitely check that out. There were also updates for Q&A to support RLS from an embedded perspective. There was a preview for a token-based identity coming from Azure Active Directory if you're using the Azure SQL database data source. The other big item in this blog post was a white paper for managing multi-tenancy with Power BI Embedded. It's definitely a good read. If you're using Power BI Embedded, make sure you go check out that article so that you can get all the details of the best way to manage those in a multi-tenancy perspective. There were also other items in this blog post with some ABI updates and custom visual updates. So be sure to check out the blog post down in the description below to get all of the info. We got a January update for Power BI data flows and inside of this blog post, it calls out that there is more data source supportability for data flows. So this is up to 47 data sources now. There were a bunch added to the UI and there were even more added behind the scenes, including Google Analytics. So this means that you can actually, for those ones that aren't displayed in the UI, you can go connect to those inside of Power BI desktop copy it over to data flows and go to town. Support for SQL native queries was also added. This means that you can actually use a native query for SQL Server if you're connecting to that data source. So previously this wasn't available. Also, they updated the transformations that are allowed in Power Query Online. So it now supports all of the transformations that you can do in Power BI Desktop into Power Query Online. So even if those aren't available from the ribbon bars and the UI inside of Power Query Online, if you do it in Power BI Desktop, copy it over, they will work. Those are pretty great updates for Power BI data flows. I'm excited to see what will come in the rest of 2019 for that. So be sure to check out the blog post links down in the description below, along with links to all of the items in this roundup, including some bonus items. So go check it out. Personal bookmarks are now available from the Power BI service. So this means that if you're working with a report inside of the Power BI service, you can actually create your own bookmarks on that report that are for you. This was a really big ask from the community and this was something that everyone really wanted and now it is available in the service for you to use. So be sure to check it out. Let me know what your thoughts are on it and how it's working for you. There is a note in the blog that indicates that the deployment is ongoing and it should be fully available in all data regions by January 24th. So hang in there, patience. It should be there by the end of the week and then you can go ahead and start using personal bookmarks with reports 
from a consumption perspective. All right, I'm gonna pass this off to you. What was your favorite item this week? Maybe it was something I mentioned in the roundup. Maybe it was something I didn't mention. Go ahead and leave that down in the comments below and let me know. For me, it was David Eldersfeld's blog on the filter pane versus slicers. It really made me think about how I'm gonna use slicers going forward in my report. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.